Okay. I think it's almost ready. Not yet. I want that egg done. Again, hashtag runny egg yesterday. You don't like a runny egg? No. No. I do not. What, are you worried about salmonella? No, I just don't like yolk. You're a yolk. You're a yolk. Whatever. <laughs> That's the worst insult ever. Oh, it's totally... Here we go. Have a seat. Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. show i'm jace let us start with this y'all picked a really really good day to be here first the powerball is 1.4 billion dollars okay number two have you guys heard of that show naked attraction on max yeah yeah where it's a dating show but they're just naked people they show everything well, it's Friday. We, Fallon and I wanted to have a little fun, so we thought we, we are going to play today in the back half of the show our own version of Naked Attraction. <laughs> so what's going to happen is we've got to change the rules a little bit. We're going to randomly select two people from our audience that will then go out in the parking lot naked. <laughs> so, Leo? Hold on, Leo. Don't do anything. Hold on. So what we're going to do, this is totally at random. Whoever photographer Eric stops the camera at right now, they will, they will be in some matter of undress later in the show. Go ahead, Leo. Who do we have today? Right there. There we go. Yes. That's right. That's right. Those, <laughs> they'll, be, they'll be joining us in our parking lot a little bit later in some matter of undress. And that's funnier for many reasons that you'll discover later. Let's get started, everybody. Let's roll it. Here we go. <laughs> oh, we're so glad you're here. Filling in for Kendall. Give it up for Fallon, everyone. Yes. I mean, we had a meeting, right? We had a meeting we wanted to spice up today, and Fallon goes, let's make some audience members get nude. That is exactly my idea. No, no, it's not. No. <laughs> the original idea was Jason wouldn't wear pants behind the desk, but then, uh, yeah. yeah, if you stand up, that's a whole thing. It's a whole thing, and we have a side. You, yes. you couldn't do that, no, obviously. No, and so. I wouldn't do that to you. Exactly, and I wouldn't do that. So we thought, let's just make the yeah, audience members exactly. do it. Yeah, perfect. Actually, Fallon knows the two audience members, and so do I that will be playing the game. Yeah, anyway. How you doing? I'm great. Uh, I hear you have. Now we haven't. We have not shown a picture mm -hmm. of your beautiful daughter yet since no. you've joined the show. So no. do we have a picture today? Picture today? Sock. Oh, we have a sock. Oh, okay. Let's look at this. Okay. Why did it take you across the road? Why? Because. <laughs> 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 she does. Yeah. I should. I should have had Olive do the monologue for heaven's sake. She would have done better. That's her one joke. She was auditioning for the show, so. Oh, we'll get her yeah. in here. She can yeah. do the monologue someday. She'll do better. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, oh and look. Is, that's. She just celebrated her fourth birthday on September fifteenth. So you know, oh. still very into the unicorns and rainbows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is four like? Four is scary, Jason. Thank you for asking. <laughs> um, it is like she understands things better, like manipulation. Um, yeah. So it's like she'll be laying in bed at night, but like, someone at daycare broke something today. Don't know who it was. Good night. <laughs> and roll over, and you're like, 
I'm racing a serial killer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's scary and, uh, and also cute. She, so she'll drop <laughs> lines like that and uh -huh. just roll over and go to bed? Uh, yes, and she also is uh, doing some scary things at daycare, uh, like convincing other children their pillows are hers. <laughs> and she'll be like, no, that's my pillow, Lucy. And Lucy's like, oh, okay. And she, she takes home random she, kids' she, idols? Yeah, she's, she's a, a klepto, I think. It's no wonder that woman <laughs> in the day one called you a felon <laughs> instead of felon. <laughs> You're raising a future felon. I am, yeah. Well, I'm I'm from Indiana. Oh, we're I from Indiana. That's family, what we do, you know? audience. You so, don't have to. Yeah. This is what we do. <laughs> yes. It is, yeah. No, she's sweet. You know, she's funny. <laughs> she she after you laugh. say all that, yeah. but she's sweet. I know, yeah. I know. One day she's going to roll this footage for her therapist. So <laughs> yes. I'm not worry about that. <laughs> It'll be a couple extra visits. <laughs> Yeah. Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. It's going to be really expensive therapy. Uh, back off, Barbie. One new movie is ready to compete for the biggest hit of the year. And this is what's crazy. It's not even open yet. This was released yesterday, the news. Taylor Swift's concert movie, The Eras Tour, has already earned more than a hundred million dollars worldwide in just advanced ticket sales, meaning butts haven't even touched seats yet. The movie opens next Friday at AMC and Cinemark Theaters. Right now, it's only scheduled to be in theaters for four weeks, but you know as well as Fallon is raising that girl <laughs> that that's going to change. Yeah. So, Harry, my friend who's in the audience today, we attended both nights of the Eras tour in the Twin Cities. Because, both nights. Because we're greedy. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> but we had the, and Tina, my friend, who's here she attended one night but it was amazing are you would you go see it I would theaters? go mm -hmm. I was actually I, I I am not a full Swifty but I actually saw I saw what you posted and Harry mm -hmm. posted I was a little jealous I thought you know when it was over I kind of had a little FOMO I'm like yeah. I should have went but I that's why I'm gonna go to this yes. and I think mm -hmm. I'm a lot of people I think that's why this is gonna be a hit absolutely for people that didn't want to shell out the money or or couldn't like yeah. couldn't find tickets in there or they were like with you with Adele I'm not spending twenty three hundred dollars on a ticket like no. that's not feasible I'm not know? doing that yeah. no next in the dish it's the unexpected hit of the fall TV season no not naked attraction but the, gold, <laughs> the Golden Bachelor delivered the highest ratings in three years for the Bachelor franchise. And it, yeah, I love it. I thought it was going to be a hit. And it's the most watched premiere ever on Hulu. Uh, the second episode aired last night, and one woman connected with Gary uh, has a said, I love when Howard's there anyway. <laughs> Gary uh, has a connection in a very surprising way. Watch this. There's one more thing I need to clarify. Only one? Well, no, many. But if you ever want to whisper sweet nothings in my ear, I will be able to hear you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Leslie shows me that she has two hearing aids as well. And I thought that was really kind of darling. So if I whisper softly. Now I can hear you. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! What did he say? Uh, we're not going to say. That's for me to know. She's sweet. Yeah. That is, uh, that's our very own, that's Leslie Fema from Minneapolis, finding a little bit of a spark with Gary. <laughs> and I, I, I know her, uh, her son is a friend of mine, Eli, wow. of the Femas. If you're here in the Twin Cities, you know the restaurant Femas and Maison Margot. David Fema, chef, was just here. Uh, that, that's the whole family oh, right nice. there. It's okay. part of the, yeah, within the family. And she's lovely. She is like, a fitness queen. Oh, yeah. She's nice. She's she's wonderful. And again, I'll repeat f f what I saw. I went for a little run down by the river uh, and but down by the Mississippi, and I saw the ABC crew down there. Oh. Um, yeah. So and this was late in the game. So I think my prediction is mm -hmm. she at the very least gets a hometown visit. I would guess. Yeah. yeah. She. I liked her from the very first episode, and they kind of like framed her in a very nice way. So I have the same feeling. Yeah. I when when it was announced, I I DM'd Eli, her son, and I went. Why didn't you tell me? I was just at your restaurant. And then the next day, it's like, your mom is on ABC. I mean, it's like, would you do, because I mean, look, Fallon and I are friends, but I still, there's nuggets that I love discovering about mm -hmm. you, like with the audience. If you would do any reality show, mm -hmm. The Bachelor, any, what would you do? 
Oh, that's such a good question. Because, right? Yeah. I mean, the top reality show I watch is The Kardashians, so I wouldn't be invited there. I'm too poor. Um, <laughs> but um, if it was a competition, I don't know. I'm so weak, and I would, I don't know, maybe I would try Survivor, but okay. I'd be removed very quickly Could, because I would be like, I'm too hungry, and I would, yeah. yeah. I have the best, like, it's competing networks, but if CBS is watching, you and I would be so funny on the Amazing Race. Oh my God. We would be the we would be the worst team. Ever. We would be eliminated. <laughs> yeah. Like we yeah. we would be we would stop halfway. There would be like a time challenge. Oh yeah. You and I would pass like a raising cane and it'd be like. <laughs> you know what? I'd be like. <laughs> Fallon, check the time. Do we have time to go through raising canes? It's worth risking it, Jason. It's worth it. <laughs> oh, CBS, please put us on your show. Oh, we would be so fun. I think so. Oh, yeah. God. We're going to come back. We have so much more today on this show when we return. Back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> Some people who got the new iPhone 15 may have noticed a problem with overheating. Apple blamed a bug in the operating system and released a fix. But Stephen, <laughs> Stephen Colbert came up with another option for you on last night's Late Show. Look at this. The new iPhone 15 is heating up sometimes, literally. The phone can, at times, be too hot to hold. Hot selling phones have been running as high as 112 degrees, according to the Wall Street Journal. Apple now says it has a fix to deal with the overheating issue. We here at Apple have heard your concerns about the iPhone 15 setting your hands on fire. That's why we're excited to introduce the state of the art Apple Air Sleeve. Crafted from cutting edge corrugated cellulose fiber, it instantly pairs with your phone. The Apple Air Sleeve, starting at $249.99. Available for the iPhone 15, iPhone 15 Plus, and Venti. Perfect pricing. Perfect pricing. <laughs> Perfect pricing. Because what was it? Remember when Apple sold that cloth? It was a wiping cloth, and it was yeah. like seventy-five dollars oh or something. Oh my for, gosh! Yeah, just get the whoosh cloth. It's best thing ever. You you have so many of them. Yeah. The 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 whoosh cloth. I named it the best thing ever months ago. It's so good. It's the best cloth and spray for your phone. Oh, so just using your shirt. That's not, that's not. I mean, in a pinch, okay, you that'll okay, do, okay. yeah. Okay. More, more just for you now. I've said it over and over and over again, but my buddy Howard Stern is one of the best interviewers out there. He really, really is. And he did it again this week with his guest, Arnold Schwarzenegger. One of my favorite moments from that talk had to do with the decision Arnold made before he hit it big in Hollywood. Listen to this. People didn't know who you were yet. You hadn't done Conan the Barbarian. Jack Lane comes to you and says, hey, man. I'll give you $200,000 to represent Jack Lane Gyms. I think 99.9% .9 of the people would have said, yes, where do you get the and wherewithal to do that, to turn down that kind of money? And I thought about it and I said to myself, wait a minute, my goal is to be a leading man in movies and to be another Clint Eastwood and Charles Bronson. Those were the big stars at that time that got a million dollars a movie. I want to make a million dollars a movie. I want to shoot for that goal. So, no, I cannot take this job. No matter how much money it is, I cannot take this job. So I had a very clear vision of where I wanted to go with my acting career. So I felt kind of like this is in my way. It, this will be a side a thing that, that it will take me away from my main goal. Yeah. Arnold. Well, it was a bet that paid off. Mm -hmm. It was a bet that would pay off because soon after that, Arnold would appear in movies like Pumping Iron in the 70s and Conan the Barbarian in, in the early 80s. Oh. It's, a, it's a great lesson. I it mean, is. I, you know, on a very small level, the media, uh, the, why I connected with that is when you have such a clear vision for yourself mm -hmm. and you don't let anybody or anything, that, that is courageous. There's so many words that can describe that. I remember 
um, moving here. You know, I'm, Fallon and I are both from Indiana. I just remember a professor telling me that Minneapolis was a good TV market. Mm -hmm. And one morning I woke up at my mom's house, I was 22, and I went, oh my goodness, I'm going to many. I turn on the TV and there was an Explore Minnesota commercial, uh, and I called my friend Candace. Yeah. We jumped in my crappy Dodge Neon, and <laughs> uh, and we drove here. And I moved here with no friends, no job at the time, mm. and just had a very clear vision for what I wanted to do. So that takes courage on a much larger scale. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of people like want to bet on themselves, but then, you know, you get that little temptation and then you get off track and... Or people telling you that you're never going to do X, Correct. Y, and Z. Correct. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next up, David Beckham is telling all in his new docuseries on Netflix. And what... <laughs> 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 One moment everyone is talking about. Literally, Fallon came into the meeting. She says, oh, I saw this. <laughs> uh, involves... David calling out his wife, Posh Spice, Victoria, about her upbringing. Look carefully and listen carefully, because it's hard to hear. Listen. We both come from families that work really hard. Both of our parents work really hard. We're very working, working class. Be honest. I, I am being Be honest. honest. I am being what honest. What car did your dad drive you to school in? So my dad, did, no, one my dad, what well, was it? All right, it's not a simple answer what because car, what did you get your dad to drive? It to depends. No, 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 no. Okay, what in car? the eighties, my dad had a Rolls Royce. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Guys, Posh had a very hard upbringing. Uh, in case you admit it, it missed it. Posh admitted, revealed that her dad drove her to school. Not in a Toyota Corolla, no, in a Rolls Royce. Oh my Beckham God. Beckham is the top streaming show right now on Netflix. What did you go to school in? Did you do the bus? I did the bus. Did mm -hmm. you do the bus in Indiana? Combination. Okay. I walked to school sometimes because we lived close. Yeah. Or the bus. And I was the first to be picked up and last to be dropped off, Me which too. is a nightmare. It's the nightmare. nightmare routine. I was flipped, though, when I went into junior high. And now my lifelong friend, Jason Diener, just retired, a wonderful police officer in San Diego. But Jason was my bully uh, in junior oh, high. Sheesh. We ended up being friends. It was It's a great story. When I eventually write some, some, some book, I'll, I'll, it's a great chapter. But... I got on the bus, and you know, when you're in junior high, you switch buses, you switch schools. I'm petrified. I was already bullied. So I get on this bus, and I have, it's pouring down rain, and I have, my mother dressed me like the Morton Salt Girl. I have like, I have like a yellow, I look like a combination of, of the gay Gorton's Fisherman and the Morton Salt Girl. And I get on the bus, I get on the bus, and I, I'm all wet. And I get on, I look at the bus driver, I go, does this bus go to Barker? <laughs> <laughs> like with my little voice. And Jason is in the back of the bus with the cool people. Mm -hmm. And he stands up, he goes, where else would the bus go? Sit down, Morton. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And now I love him. We've been, yeah, he's, now he's one of my best friends. He sounds funny. He's funny. He's very, <laughs> Jason's funny. Next in the dish, every parent knows the struggle of getting their kids to eat vegetables. Well, it seems some people uh, <laughs> never really grow out of that. Listen to this. One of my favorites, he's an icon, 78-year-old broadcaster, sportscaster, Al Michaels. Al Michaels talked to Chris Wallace for his show on Max and revealed something kind of shocking. Listen to this. Is it true that you have never knowingly eaten a vegetable in your life? That is true. That is true. I was born when my parents were 18 and my mother hadn't even read Dr. Spock at that point. So she just let me have the, the, the run of the... Uh, of the course and uh i always push the vegetables away to this day no and i guess what i've proven chris is that man does not need vegetables to survive but is it is it just possible that you would like i'm thinking of one of the more non-objectionable vegetables a carrot oh please please a carrot no a can no that's an objectionable vegetable <laughs> Quote of the day. <laughs> Audience, I, that's the quote of the day. Yeah, I think A so. carrot is an objectionable <laughs> vegetable. I yeah. Guess so. It's one of my favorites. I love carrots. I like them cooked. I like them raw, dipped in ranch. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> I, we had to do this segment a little while ago of things that you have to admit that you didn't know that's really dumb. Like, you know, things that you thought were true because mm -hmm. your parents lied to you. Yeah. Um, mine was, I thought baby carrots 
were grown like that. And I, I know, so again, Indiana public education. Yeah. I mean, you know <laughs> truly, what I mean? Truly, yeah. truly, I love yeah. the high Northwestern Indiana, but yeah, <laughs> y'all know what I mean. But yeah, I thought baby carrots were bred that way. That's adorable though. I know. That's, you should, I wish you still believed that, honestly. <laughs> It'd be so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Next, it's time, speaking of which, I purposely said what I just said. We have a brand new segment on the Jason Show and we're calling it, of course it's Indiana. That's right. Now, in case. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, in case you didn't catch it a little while ago, uh, Fallon and I are both uh, Hoosiers. We, we come from Indiana. And today it's a case of the beer. <laughs> <laughs> It makes sense, actually, it when does. you say it. Yeah. I've got to say this without laughing. Today, audience, it's the case of the... Uh, <laughs> it's the case of the beer-sipping monkey in our home state. That's right, I said beer-sipping monkey. <laughs> On Wednesday, look at this. Look at your screen. This monkey named Momo... Uh, that's Momo the monkey <laughs> escaped from its owner's property in Indianapolis. Momo wasn't easy to catch because this type of species is considered the fastest primate on earth, <laughs> reaching speeds of 30 miles an hour. <laughs> Momo can fly, girl. At one point, one point, Momo was spotted in a neighborhood uh, garage drinking beer it found in a garbage can. Yeah. Police warned, <laughs> police warned people in the neighborhood to stay away because the monkey can be aggressive, especially after the Coors Light. Uh, Momo was luckily captured later. It's not clear if the owner will get Momo back because this isn't the first time that Momo has flown the coop. Yeah. Well, and I... <laughs> How much did we pay for this? Five dollars. Is this five okay, dollars? Good deal. Good deal. Oh, that. Good deal. Worth it. Bargain. Oh God. That's, that's, that's Momo's face when they took away the beer from him. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was. You said Coors Light. I was wondering, is it a Bud Light? It's what a is Bud. Yeah, 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 yeah. He likes all beer. It's it's a Bud Light. Yeah, yeah we'll that Momo drinks Bud Light. But yeah. <laughs> Oh, Very God. A good. Of course. Of it's course Indiana. it's Indiana. Of yeah. course it's Indiana. Honestly, I, uh, I've seen a similar story like that about my dad drinking beer out of a garbage can in an alley. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's very... <laughs> Call Kendall quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She, Do you want to complete this we're, story? No, no. No, okay. No, you just want, no, you just, want to leave the audience to make the make up the end of that story? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a no. Yeah, no. But we'll just leave it at yeah, that. We'll yeah. We'll just leave it at that. It's time to meet our last day. You know what we'll do on Fallon's last day before Kendall comes down? You'll hear the end of that story. Yeah. It's time to meet our last JVIP of the week. Meet Lynn from St. Paul, Minnesota. Lynn says she loves everything about our show. She tried that Snicker salad recipe featured, and her family loved it. Yeah. But you, Lynn, can I give you some suggestions? Keep your family, uh, make sure they don't take all the Snickers out of that salad and leave you with just apples. Uh, Lynn gets a Jason Show mug. She's also entered to win the monthly grand prize. That includes being a VIP guest in our audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture World, and this is brand new, a $250 gift certificate to our new sponsor, Renew Med Spa. Friends, we have a best thing ever, and I'm a fish out of water again when we return. Back in a moment. <laughs> My friends, in just a little bit. I am a fish out of water again, and this time, oof, I am learning to knit. What are you doing? Casting on. I'm not a crafter, never have been, never thought I would be. What does that mean? It what? means starting your project. So you're getting a, your. Can you say that with less judgment? <laughs> And then, our latest best thing ever, a product my family thought I would never use. That and more when we come back. Welcome back. Don't forget to get tickets to next week's show. Go to eventbrite.com and search for The Jason Show.
Well, it's a craft that's been around for centuries, but during my lifetime, I've never touched a pair of knitting needles until a few weeks ago, even though my radio show I do with Alexis, who's a crafter, my staff thought it would be a great idea for me to learn how to knit. Specifically, Kendall thought it would be a great idea. So <laughs> she signed me up for a class at the great store called Harriet and Alice here in the Twin Cities. That, my friends, is our latest fish out of water. I've done this before you guys came, sorry. Oh, it's I think please. You have to. Oh, okay. Yeah. Stop being teacher's pet. We've been here, Eric. We've been here, what, seven minutes? And he's bragged about his knitting skills four to five times already. <laughs> I've knitted before. Look, Jason, I'm casting on. Great. All right, I need Anyway, okay, we're here. What are we? Is this knitting? Yes. Okay, we're knitting for Kendall, and we're making. Easy baby washcloth. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna try to do. You mean that Jeff's already doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Casting on. What does that mean? It what? means starting your project. So you're getting your, your... Can you say that with less judgment? <laughs> <laughs> starting your project. Because some of us are advanced crafters. Wouldn't I mean. you? I've known you for too many years. When did you knit? When did you, you know, ever knit? I have many passions you don't know about. Yeah, I know. So okay. we're going to make, make a washcloth and it's just going to be oh. like this. It's just garter stitch, which means you knit every row. It looks exactly the same on both sides. So like in a beginning knitting class, I'll teach everybody how to knit and purl. Okay. And a knit is like what a sweater would look like, right? Oh, this yeah, V. Yeah, looks like a sweater. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then on the back side, yeah, this is what a, a pearl would look like. My grandma's so. middle name was Pearl. Yeah. Good for you and but your grandma. Did she spell it P-U-R-L? No, P -U -R -L. Mm, that's too bad. Velma Pearl. <laughs> Great. My grandma's middle name was Kiss My <laughs> <laughs> Well, my grandma's names were Harriet and Alice. Oh, what? Yes. Is that where this comes from? Yes. I love that. I thought yeah. that was maybe friends of yours or... <gasps> I love that. Um, hold on. Do, do you feel bad about that uh, Kiss My <laughs> Grandma joke now? <laughs> A little bit. Can we edit that out? <laughs> You don't have to hold it like chopsticks. It's not chopsticks. Totally fine. <laughs> what are you hungry? Totally fine. I mean, yeah. The the bumps are gonna be down like that, like and that. your left hand on top. Oh. Oh, that's weird. Okay. okay. Definitely not like chopsticks. No. 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 And I have a rhyme. Okay. To help you keep track. In the front door, around the back, out the front door, and off jumps Jack. <laughs> All right. And I can come around. Eric, do you have my ADHD medication in there? That's okay. You know what? Yeah. This helps with ADHD. Okay, good. I need I'm this. Good. My adult yeah. is kicking in right now, Eric. In the front door, around. <laughs> You're holding it. You should be like that. Like crisscross. We're gonna go in the other way though. In the front door though, hon. Front door? The other way. Oh, that's right. Front door, Jason. Front door. Ah! Yeah, I saw it happening. Okay. Hang on. Can't you see yourself just sitting and watching TV and doing this, Jason? No. Think of all the gifts you can knit for people. So I did two knits and two pearls. Should I just keep going two and two? Will that make sense? Well, um... Or what do you recommend? He's the most pretentious knitter I've ever met. <laughs> he is! You are! I'm not! I prefer pearling. <laughs> <laughs> Only losers do the other knit. <laughs> See, I think pearling is so much faster. You made your point. We've heard that now four to five times. Eric can check the tape, but it's been, he's mentioned purling what, Eric? Uh, 150. 150 times. <laughs> you just said you like to purl. Two knits and two purl. I do like to purl. My grandma's middle name was Pearl. I like purling. I like purling. Let me see you purl. Yeah, purl. Slide these forward a little bit. You're sweating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you got one stitch. Doing great. Look at that. <laughs> 
Here, Kendall, I made this for you. <laughs> waka waka. She's literally getting row, one row. It'll clean the baby's lips. <laughs> Here is my row. This is the baby lip cleaner. <laughs> the baby lip cloth. So here's my row, and then that is Billy Brown Nose's uh, four rows. It's five. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Okay, it's a full thing. <laughs> oh boy. Here's Billy Brown Nose's uh, oh, baby cleaner. Nice. Mine is in a drawer somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't. I know. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry to our friend at Harriet and Alice. Mm -hmm. I did. And you're with me. Oh my gosh. We do not. Ha we are not built for this. Absolutely not. And when people say it like calms them, I'm like, I have never been more stressed trying to knit or do adult coloring books in my life. No. Like it is not. It's very stressful. And I. Jeff was frustrated. I hated Jeff in that moment because he was so good. He's, so, he's my good friend, but I literally, I just wanted to yeah, just, just poke him a little bit yeah. with the, the knitting needles. Fair. Just yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Harriet and Alice has, a, has tons of great yarn, except for Vanna White. That's a whole other joke. Uh, <laughs> and offers all types of classes. Visit HarrietandAlice.com for more information. And let me just say to photographer Eric, editing that, he is the best. Truly. That is the, truly the best. We'll be right back, back in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back. Well, a few days ago, Fallon shared her best thing ever, and at the, at the same time, uh, really angered everyone at Trader Joe's, uh, including uh, a dessert from Trader Joe's that a lot of you are loving. A lot of you. So much so, we're getting hate mail from Trader Joe's. <laughs> well, today, I'm just joking. Today, it's my turn, and I'm sticking with the food theme for my latest best thing ever. Well, my latest best thing ever is something the Jason Show staff has been using in our office for about a week now, about two weeks. Here it is. It's the Hamilton Beach Breakfast Sandwich Maker. Now, I bought it on Amazon after seeing it on Instagram, and I brought it to our office because immediately everyone in my family and all my friends said, um, you're dumb, you're never going to use that. Um, <laughs> and I got judged. Well, we have used it. Check it out. The Hamilton Beach breakfast sandwich maker that nobody in my life thinks that I would use or use. Well, sorry, sorry, hope you didn't bet any money on it because it's been like two weeks and we've used it a lot, haven't we? And when he says we, he means me. I'm the sandwich maker. I bought it, he can build it. So let's show everybody what we need and how easy it is to use. I have a selection of cheeses. <laughs> Ham or Canadian Wait, bacon. You forgot to give them your tip. Get cracker cut cheese. It's the right cheese ratio so it doesn't spill over the machine. Spray. Here's my first tip. Put the top of the muffin on the bottom. You'll see why. Add some ham. Oh god, I have to crack an egg on TV? Yeah, Julia Child, yeah. Is it that hard? Oh, look at that. You gotta spread out the yolk. A little salt. Ooh. You must season the egg. Very important, because it can be bland. There we go. Okay, now the instructions say put the muffin top on the egg right away. I say wait a little, let the egg cook. Okay. Close it up. You're defying the instructions from the Hamilton Beach people? Yes. How now long? it takes five minutes to cook the egg. I put the muffin top on in about two minutes. Fast forward this, Eric. Yeah, still might just have a muffin top conversation. I mean, we could. <laughs> Probably pretty entertaining. Jeff and I were called muffin top as a kid and teenager and in our 20s and 40s. 40s. 49. 49. <laughs> Okay, now you see the egg is a little cooked a little. It's been about a minute. About a minute, minute and a half. Now I'm gonna put the bottom on top. Boom. Close it up. Close it up. Four more minutes. This is perfect for this type of setting, meaning Jeff's office, or an office setting, or a dorm where you don't have access to pots and pans and spats. Uh, I was an RA, you shouldn't have this kind of equipment. Oh, stop it. 
Good Lord. Every party needs a pooper. That's why we invited him, party pooper. Now you add the cheese. So in the four minute mark, add your cheese. Don't add it right away, because it'll melt all over and make a mess. These are the tips the Hamilton Beach people won't tell you. Okay, I think it's almost ready. Not yet. I want the egg done. Again, hashtag runny egg yesterday. Okay, it's done. Now you lift it up. Watch the magic of the sandwich maker. Eric, you get one try at this, Eric. Don't miss the miss the magic. But look at that. And you have a sandwich. Ladies and gentlemen, a Jeff McMuffin made with the Hamilton Beach breakfast sandwich maker that nobody thought we would use. We're using it, people. We are using it. Oh my gosh. Okay. You you saw it in action today. You didn't you you passed only because you're having lunch with the naked people. But yes. yeah, but um, but you saw it in action. It's nice, isn't it? It's very impressive. I think you guys should try croissants next time. Cut the ends off, stick those in, maybe throw some butter on, because butter never killed anyone. <laughs> and then it'd be like even better. But uh, oh Leo was like Oh, in his whole like his own moment with oh, it. Director yeah. Leo stopped caring about the show, his mm -hmm. family, everything. Yeah, yeah. he <laughs> consumed that sandwich. He it's did. really good. Yeah. Hey, Leo. Yes, Jason. The sandwich was good, wasn't it? It was delicious. <laughs> yeah. yes. It's Director Leo. Okay, and it's really economical. The sandwich maker sells online or at Target or Wally World for around 25 to 30 bucks. I got it at Amazon, and that is my latest best thing ever. Everybody. We're gonna we're gonna take a break. We're gonna play a game with our studio audience, not Naked Attraction. Another game when we come back. Back in a moment. Back in a moment. Well, we've all had them, those first jobs during high school or college when we earned money before starting a big old career. Well, most of us know that I worked, uh, most of you have been with us for all, you know where I worked at a pet store, a movie theater, Red Lobster, and the Disney store be before I was fired for not being perky enough. Well, first jobs are actually the inspiration for today's game time. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. <laughs> Today's game is called Celebrity Jobs. Here's how it's going to work. It's really easy. I'm going to give you a job, and you have to guess between two famous faces which, uh, which one did that job before becoming famous. Playing today, they're both celebrating birthdays. Give it up for Ariel and Yvonne, everyone. There we go. Okay. Ariel Yvonne, please, uh, hands above buzzers. Buzz in as soon as I give you the multiple choices. There's three of them, okay? Here we go. The job, party clown. Is it Hugh Jackman, Hugh Grant, or Tom Cruise? Ariel. Tom Cruise. Not Tom Cruise. Is it Hugh Jackman or Hugh Grant that was a clown? Hugh Grant. No, it was Hugh Jackman was the party clown. Yes. Okay, I can see that. Okay, next profession. Professional closet organizer. Was that Katie Holmes, Kim Kardashian, or Julianne Moore? Ariel. Julianne Moore. No. Over to you. Katie or Kim? Katie. No. It was Kim Kardashian. You know what? It's all right. We're doing well. It's why, yo, it's, we're doing well. There are, no, there are no losers at this game. Here we go. Hands above buzzers. Here's the job. Tina Turner, cover artist on a cruise ship. Who did that? Viola Davis, Jennifer Hudson, or Taraji P. Henson? Ariel. Taraji P. You are right. Yeah. <laughs> Ariel is on the board. Okay, next job. Here we go. Calligraphy instructor. Is it Emma Stone, Meghan Markle, or Kristen Davis? Ariel. Oh. Meghan. You are right. Yeah. Two in a row, Meghan Markle. She's so cute. In suits. Got to talk about that next yes. week. Anyway, Ariel Yovan, uh, hands above buzzers. Here we go. Next job, makeup artist. Who was a makeup artist? Ryan Reynolds, Jeremy Renner, or Scarlett Johansson? Ariel. A. Ryan Reynolds? Yes. No. Over to you, Jeremy Renner or Scarlett Johansson? Jeremy. You are right. Yes. You're on the board, birthday girl. That's 
That's right. He was the avenger of the Clinique counter. I love it. Okay, here we go. Mortuary beautician. Was it oh. Whoopi Goldberg, Kathy Najemi, or Kim Cattrall? Ariel. Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg is right. Yeah, I remember that. That's right. Whoopi was. Here we go. Fallon was one of those two as well, yeah. Here we go. Here's the job. <laughs> Limo driver for strippers. Uh, by the way, Fallon was also this as well, yeah. Uh, Fallon, uh, M Matthew McConaughey, George Clooney, or Brad Pitt? Yvonne. George Clooney. No. Over to you, Matthew McConaughey or Brad Pitt? Brad Pitt. You are right. You are right. It's Brad Pitt. Wow. Right? like a fun side hustle there. I like that. Okay. Here's the next occupation. Hat check girl. Was that Mariah Carey, Shania Twain, or Reba McIntyre? Ariel. Reba. Not Reba. Mariah or Shania? Shania. No, it is Mariah, Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey was a hat check girl. I can't see that, but okay. Okay, next. A professional puppeteer. Who did that? John Stewart, Stephen Colbert, or Seth Meyers? Ariel. Seth Meyers. No, over to you. Stephen Colbert or John Stewart? John Stewart. You are right. Yeah. You are right. Former Daily Show host John Stewart. Next, corn sucks shucker. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Jason. <laughs> Shucker, was that <laughs> Pamela Anderson, Cindy Crawford, or Heidi Klum? Ariel. Pamela Anderson. Nope. Cindy Crawford or Heidi Klum? Cindy. You are right. Oh. Yeah. Oh. right. And that is it. Congratulations to today's players. You're both going home with a Jason Season oh. 9 uh, mug oh, and a tote bag as well. Oh. There we go. Oh. If you can't. Join us in our studio audience. Tickets are free. Head to eventbrite.com and search The Jason Show. Pick a day you can be here or uh, shoot that QR code right now. We're going to take a break to wrap things up right after this. Back in a moment. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you so much. There we go. It is time for the surprise goodbye. You know how this works. We don't know what's in this segment until I read it live right now. Today, an unexpected hitchhiker for a driver in New York State. Look at this. A guy was driving from Brooklyn to upstate New York when he noticed a big rat riding on his hood. That's a rat? No. Get this. The rat held on for the two-hour trip. The driver stopped. The rat crawled under the hood <gasps> for the rest of the trip. No. no word if he ever saw that rat again. No. That is. That looks like a lion. Look at that. Are you afraid? Of, do you look, like? Do rodents freak you out? I don't want them around me necessarily. Yeah. My radio partner Alexis, who you know. Alexis, seven years ago, we were in a commercial break, and she went into the bathroom, and we are allegedly work in soundproof studios, mm -hmm. as you know. Mm -hmm. I heard a scream from the radio studio. She opened up the stall, and there was a wet rat sitting, <laughs> sitting on the toilet seat, looking at her, and Alexis says they looked at each other, mm -hmm. had a moment, mm -hmm. and then the rat jumped off and ran toward ah, her. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. Crawled through the no. toilet because of construction. <gasps> Yeah. What a, what the, what a lovely way to end the week. Yeah. I know. I know. Oh, my God. Monday, Andrew Zimmern will join us in studio to talk about season three of his show on the Outdoor Channel, plus his work as a United Nations Global Ambassador for Food. But that's going to do it for us this week. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Thanks for watching this week, everybody. We'll see you, we'll see you Monday. Avoid those rats.